think there are three benefits to an author to publish for publishing in an open access journal. Uh, the first is you have the, the moral higher ground, but, no. uh, but two serious benefits. The first is that the evidence appears to be that uh, papers published in open, in open access journals are read more frequently than papers which are published in commercial journals, non-open non access journals. And that's very important. Uh, there's no point in publishing, publishing a scientific paper unless it's read. Uh, and one wants one's work to be read as widely as possible. And it seems fairly self-evident um, that your paper will be read more frequently if there are no barriers whatsoever to access it. And that's true if we publish in genome biology um, a primary paper, then anyone uh, anywhere in the world can download the PDF file uh, and doesn't have to click and say, I agree to this and I'll pay this amount of money. Uh, and that, I think, is the real advantage. Coming back to the moral high ground, it's not such, so much the moral high ground. Because I believe that open access is the future, uh, I want to support it. Yeah. Um, and I do not want to publish uh, in a journal uh, published by a commercial journal. In fact, I work time I will not publish uh, a primary scientific paper uh, in a journal owned by publishers which demand payment for access. And in fact, I won't referee for them either. And I think we'll look back in ten years' time and wonder what all the fuss was about. You know, um, and I can't I can't believe that the current commercial uh, uh, scientific publishing model uh, uh, can survive. You know, slowly but, but surely, I, 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 I'm sure that the legacy literature will, will be made of open access. Um, and uh, one, wants to, one wants to promote that, and therefore we publish in open, open access journals. And in my experience of publishing in, in genome biology or B, uh, BMC journal or PLOS is that the standard of professionalism is just as high uh, as it was uh, with the commercial journal, the standard of ed editing uh, is, is just as, uh, as good, the turnaround is just as good, so I mean, the, I, can't see, I can't see any disadvantage uh, for publishing uh, in an open access journal. There's a third reason uh, for publishing in, in open access journals, uh, which is that uh, I own the copyright, and that, uh, uh, that means um, that if a third party is writing a review, writing a textbook, uh, I can assign or I can give that person uh, permission uh, to reproduce a figure or re reproduce a table uh, freely and I don't have to charge them. Uh, and I've heard cases recently where even society-owned journals, uh, which are essentially commercial, uh, um, have been asking for a you know, hundred dollars to reproduce a figure from one of their primary papers in the review. And that's scandalous. And I think if the authors of, that pa of, of those papers knew uh, that their publisher was charging someone to reproduce one of their figures which in, in, in a re re review art article, they'd be abs absolutely outraged. And of course that inhibits the, 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 the spread of scientific information. The granting agencies clearly have a major role to play in, in, the, in the future of open access journals uh, because at the end of the day uh, all our research is dependent or 95 percent of our research is dependent uh, upon uh, uh, grant money from National Institutes of Health, the Medical Research Council, the Wellcome Trust. Um, so these are the bodies who uh, are paying for, the, for our research. Many, in many cases, not the Wellcome Trust, but in many cases, this of course is public money. I mean, it's taxpayers' money, uh, and they have a right. In fact, I say that they now have a duty uh, uh, to impose an obligation uh, on the part of their fundees to publish in open access journals. And of course, the the NIH, uh, the UK Research Councils, and the Wellcome Trust have have, uh, have already taken those steps. Uh, over the last couple of years, and that's been very, very encouraging. The position of the NIH has been tempered by politi political considerations within uh, the states, uh, where the publishers, uh, the scientific, medical, and technical publishers, have a very, very active lobby. Um, but, but it's quite clear uh, what the NIH want to do. This will have a, ma a major effect. 
Uh, it is interesting that, 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 that if you work for the NIH and publish from an NIH institution, um, even the commercial publishers uh, cannot demand that you assign copyright to them, such as the power of the US government, um, because the US government owns the copyright. So I think uh, the pressure from, from the funders is clearly going to grow. Uh, and also I think the, the, the pressure from the universities, because the universities worldwide are having to spend a lot of money buying back the work of their staff uh, uh, through, uh, from commercial pub publishers. And I think the universities and MIT has been taking the lead on this, um, uh, may well uh, themselves insist uh, that their staff publish in open access journals.